What is the Kyle Rittenhouse situation? Well, let's just start with the overview from the wiki. On August 25, 2020, amid the Kenosha unrest precipitated by the police shooting of Jacob Blake, Kyle Rittenhouse, then 17 years old from Illinois, went to Kenosha, shot and killed two people, wounded a third during multiple confrontations at two locations. He was armed with a Smith and Wesson M&P 15 rifle, and one of the individuals shot by Rittenhouse had a handgun. At the first location, Rittenhouse was pursued by a group. A gunshot was fired into the air by a third party. Kenosha resident Joseph Rosenbaum lunged at Rittenhouse and tried to take his rifle. Rittenhouse fired four times at Rosenbaum, who died shortly afterwards. That's the first person 17 year old Kyle Rittenhouse killed. OK, now notice I'm not saying murdered. That's what the, the trial is going to determine. Killed at the second location. Rittenhouse tripped while fleeing. A man kicked him. Rittenhouse fired at the man twice but missed. This is an out of control individual. While still on the ground, protesters approached Rittenhouse. Silver Lake resident Anthony Huber struck Rittenhouse with a skateboard and struggled for control of his rifle. Rittenhouse then fired at Huber once killing him. West Alice resident Gage Grosskreutz then approached Rittenhouse while holding a handgun. Rittenhouse shot him once, severing his bicep. Rittenhouse was arrested and charged with multiple counts of homicide and unlawful possession of a firearm. Another teen was arrested and charged with unlawfully supplying Rittenhouse's rifle. Rittenhouse's attorneys say it was self-defense. Upon hearing firearm discharge and in response to the physical confrontations, public sentiment and media coverage is polarized. A trial is scheduled to begin November 1. OK, so Monday we will start full comprehensive coverage. And by that, I mean, if I'm not too busy, I'll stream some of it. Comprehensive wall to wall coverage of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Now. What has been the big news this week? First of all, I have to tell you, and we're going to look at some audio here from a two and a half hour. We're going to look at video and then listen to the audio of a hearing. And you're going to start. I'm not going to tell you what you're going to feel. I am feeling as though this is maybe not a judge who is going to really be uh, a fair arbiter of this trial. I'm already very concerned about this judge, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. But one of the things that has been decided, and we're going to look at a short CNN segment about it here, the judge has said the two people that were killed can't be referred to as victims during the trial. What? OK, let's listen. Set to go on trial next week for murder. The teenager killed two people in Kenosha, Wisconsin, during protests last year in the aftermath of the Jacob Blake police shooting. Now. What has a lot of people paying attention this morning is, is a pretty controversial decision by the judge in a pre-trial hearing as there were some ground rules set that the prosecution is not happy with. The word victim is a loaded, loaded word. And I think alleged victim is a cousin to it. Let the evidence show what the evidence shows. And if the evidence shows that any or more than one of these People were engaging in arson, rioting, or looting. Looting. I'm not going to tell the defense they can't call them that. <laughs> so, okay, you guys, you guys understand what's going on, right? The prosecution is not allowed to call the people killed by Rittenhouse neither victims nor alleged victims. They can't even argue that that's what they are, even though it's a murder trial. If Kyle Rittenhouse committed murder, the victims are the two people that were killed. Can't do it. However, the defense, which is going to argue that this was self-defense of bad people, and why would they be talking about arson, etc.? The the dead people who have not been uh, charged, tried, or convicted of arson or any of these other things, the judge is saying, well, the defense, if they can show that they were arsonists, they can call them arsonists during the trial. But wait a second. Neither of those has been determined by a jury. Why? So this is already concerning. OK, early star co-anchor and attorney and legal reporter Laura Jarrett joins us now. Let me just make crystal clear what happened there in case people didn't get it. The judge just said that the people Kyle Rittenhouse killed and there's yes. no dispute over the fact that he killed them. They cannot be called victims, the people that he killed. 
They can, the judge says, however, be called rioters and looters. And that's the part I think people are finding so disturbing. The prosecution is calling it a double standard. Yes. And in reality, they're dead. They cannot defend themselves right. at this trial, right? And typically, um, when there's an agreement that somebody has been harmed in some way, injured, or been killed, Victim is an accepted term. There are defense lawyers who've been arguing for years that it is prejudicial, um, that it implies guilt, and that it taints the jury's mind. Courts are split on this. Jury instructions use the term victim all the time. Some people define it in different ways. Um, but at bottom here, it, 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 what you're pointing out is that the judge took it a step further by saying that the people who died should be cast in the light for the crimes that they committed, when in fact people go to jail for killing people who commit crimes all the time. And so I think that's the part that's really got people's attention. And if you're the prosecutor on the case, you're gonna say this is extremely prejudicial, um, but there's not much they can do about it. Because right. remember, if Kyle Rittenhaus gets off on this, if he's found not guilty, they cannot- Oh, he's getting off on all of it, I can assure you. Retry him. Yeah, there's not an appeal for no. the prosecution. That's not how it works. Exactly. And so uh, it, it's interesting. I think, you know, one of the things to remember is why is this even coming up, right? Um, Rittenhouse is going to say self-defense. He's going to say, I was so afraid from all of these looters and arsonists. But evidence 101 tells you that is not going to fly. And that's why this evidence shouldn't have been let in, because whether someone was setting fire to a building nearby should have no bearing on whether Kyle Rittenhouse was afraid for his life. And okay, so that gives us one idea of the type of thing that they're going to try to pull. 